What's going on everybody, welcome back. And we are gonna talk triggers and we're gonna talk about a bunch of them today, specifically my top three triggers. Now this is by no means an exhaustive list guys. There are triggers out there that I haven't tried. There are some that I've tried in the past. I just don't have that many rounds through that I don't have here today. But these are kind of my top three out of the bunch that I have tested, still currently have, and have at least a couple, maybe two, 300, 400, 500, some of them I have a couple thousand rounds through. And just my opinions on which ones I think are the best. And there are a couple different things that we're gonna go through of why I think these are my top three triggers for the Glock platform. For a list of the Glock triggers that I actually have tried, we'll start out with the Overwatch. Now this is the aluminum version right there. Very nice trigger, very nice setup. Shoots very well in everything that I've put it in, whether it's factory frames or the polymer 80s. Now Overwatch is a pretty dang good trigger out there. It looks good, has some really good options on it. It is very safe. Is definitely one that I like. The tactile feel of it, the difference in the trigger shoe safety is definitely a quality setup. Another one that I've recently become more and more of a fan of is the SSVI right there. If you could look at this, and yes, that is a polymer 80 in the 45 caliber with a compensated factory slide and barrel. Get you guys an up close look at that trigger right there. It is a sexy little beast. Take up, break. Reset, break. Solid little performer, very, very good looking trigger. I like what they're doing over there. So we're gonna get into this one. Uh, I've got this in this pod ready. I've got this another Glock 21 that I have, Gen 4. I've got it, uh, got it in a nine mil Glock 2 in one of my 17s. It's a really good trigger and it does look quite good. And uh, I really think it's one of the nicer looking ones on the market and it performs well and it does function in a very safe fashion as well. And of course you guys know one that was definitely gonna make this list is the Apex. This specific one here is one of the Freedom versions. Apex really kind of changed the market with their triggers but they are just dang good working triggers. And I can tell you right now, other people in the industry that I've talked to that own trigger companies or make triggers, they all speak extremely highly of Apex Tactical and what they put out. And pretty much what they have all said to me is if Apex is doing something, there is a reason. Um, so they, out, they put out just a great product. They are really affordable. They've got several different options, several different generations, several different guns. Specifically, we'll deal with the Glock one today, but I have several Apex triggers and I'm just a fan of all of them and just about every gun that I've ever put them in. Now, one that I actually don't have in a gun right now is the CMC trigger, and I'm just not the biggest fan of it. You guys can take a look at it right there. It might be a little bright for you with my hand, but it's kind of the hook. I did an initial review on this, and you can work this trigger pretty fast, make it pretty good, but it is, for the cost-benefit ratio, you're better off just sticking with a factory trigger unless you just can't deal with the uh, trigger shoe feel. And then I think there's just other options out there. It works, it goes bang, it was extremely safe, but it didn't give a whole lot of options out there. We'll get into more of that in just a little bit. And the Steel City. I have definitely become a fan of these triggers as well. This one was in that first Steel City parts build that I did right here on this Polymer 80. And you can see good looking shoe, reduced take up, brake, nice short reset and a brake. Now this one's actually the Gen 2. So this trigger has changed a little bit Give you a look in there, you can kind of see. So instead of pins, you'll see better on this side. It's actually using set screws in there, which is pretty cool. Kind of reformed that trigger shoe safety a little bit. Definitely a little cleaner looking on the version two of these, and it's definitely a good trigger. Um, I've got this in several guns. Now one that I don't have here with me today, but I will roll some footage in for you, is that Arsenal Democracy trigger. Now that trigger is really, really designed uh, quite well. They have really kind of over-engineered what's going on in there. Um, I did find a couple of issues with it, uh, a couple of things that I didn't per se like the best about it, um, and we'll get into a little bit more of that and kind of why, why it is what it is and why I had the feelings about it when I did, but it's actually a pretty cool trigger. They put a lot of thought, a lot of engineering in there, and I'll tell you right now, the work that they did on that as far as the machine work and everything and reforming that trigger bar and everything like that was just absolutely awesome. I mean, they did beautiful work on it. I just had a couple of issues here and there, so that's why... I'll kind of give my explanation on that here in a little bit when we get a little bit more in depth on which ones make the cut and which ones don't. Now one that has just been a pain in my butt is the Agency Arms. And I've got this one right here in uh, my Nomad 9 build. So you can see it, it's pretty short, but that's the problem right there. Did you see how it just didn't go back into battery? You know, some slides it works with, some it doesn't. I've had it in this Nomad 9, which with a couple of my other slides it works flawlessly in. 
With this one, not so much. I think what it comes down to is a different safety plunger, quite honestly. So it's worked in some, it hasn't worked in others. It works in this with certain slides. It works in factory frames sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll get into more of that and why this one is where it is on this list. But uh, I know some guys are huge fans of agencies. Some people are not huge fans of agencies. And I kind of find myself somewhere liking some of their stuff and not others. Now one that I have fired quite a bit because several of my friends own them is uh, different Zev triggers. Now I don't have a Zev personally. Um, and I'm, it's just because very different reasons. One, the cost, adjustable stuff that I'm not really the hugest fan of. I just never really bought a Zev um, because I just wasn't that into them. And now that there's so many other things out there on the market, I've just kind of gone with different things. I do have quite a few rounds through them, and I will get into why I put them on the list where I do a little bit more in, uh, in a bit. Now the factory trigger, obviously that one's gonna be on the list, guys, because it's what comes in the setups from the factory. So we can see the profile of the shoe, the take up right there. This is a Gen 5 brake, how it resets and breaks. Now the Gen 5 uh, factory trigger is a little bit better for sure than previous generations, but it's still a Glock trigger. You still have that crazy forward arch. You still have that trigger shoe safety that feels kind of terrible. And then you got a lot of travel, over travel. It's just, it's, it's a Glock trigger, guys. But it's obviously on the list because it's probably the most fired Glock trigger out there because it comes in Glock from the factory. And this is one there's been a little bit of controversy over recently, and that is the tactical pontoon right here. Now I've got a full review on this one as well, but look at that take up right there brake that thing is super short and this is one uh this is the version two so initially when i did my review uh shortly after that there were some changes i think in the uh, ranger proof swag trigger shoe and it caused some issues with the triggers and there were some problems going on so james went and redid uh the trigger on there put a different a couple things in here and uh, we'll get into that and i'll kind of tell you why this is where it's on the list because of that and kind of what I think this trigger is meant for, even though with the updates and the modifications with the new Ranger Proof Swag shoes, it is a safe trigger system. You just have to make sure you do your safety checks and your safety tests. And another one that I do not have in a gun is going to be the Vickers trigger. And the reason I don't have this in a gun, just to give you guys kind of here a little bit of an up close view on it right there, kind of the trigger shoe, how it works, how it looks, is because it was just, it was so bad in so many ways that I just, I thought I had actually thrown it away and I was kind of going through some old factory trigger bars and I found it just before filming the video. But I literally I did dislike this thing so much I thought I had thrown it in the trash. So I can tell you right now, it's not even anywhere near on the list. But the other ones are still gonna be fighting for those top three spots. So we're gonna go ahead and get into these right now. So we're gonna get a little bit more in depth into some of these triggers. And if you guys like what's going on here with the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on with the bell icon down there. If you're interested in any of this stuff, I will leave links down below. If it's 2A stuff, obviously the triggers guys, you gotta check that first link or two in the description. It's gonna take you off to where you can see the parts, order them if you want them. They're affiliate links guys, that's what keeps the channels going. Or you can go to my website, tacticalconsiderations.com and see pretty much everything I've ever done and all the parts I've used and go through videos, everything's hosted there as well. Now the main things that I'm going to be judging these triggers on is number one, safety. Because safety is paramount, because we're dealing with guns everybody, that should be a no brainer. Another big thing is the feel, like the overall tactile feel on your finger, that engagement with the trigger, because that is what a lot of people really dislike about factory triggers, specifically the Glock factory triggers, or even other guns that have a similar, the striker fire gun styles, Triggers that have just, you know, that trigger shoe safety that's extremely common, or a split trigger like the Smith & Wesson or the FNs. A lot of people really don't like that tactile feel, that engagement of how that trigger kind of touches the finger. And then the wall style. So being a 1911 guy, that's pretty much what I started with. You know, it's a completely different style of trigger. It's a pull rather than kind of an arc. So you're never gonna really achieve a 1911 style trigger feel. Um, some people can get really close to it. John Glocks has some amazing triggers. I'm waiting for one of his, but uh, you're not gonna get that, but that's what a lot of people chase. So for me, I like a kind of more defined hard wall. I don't like a rolling wall. I don't wanna pull through something. I kind of wanna know where my wall is and then I wanna break because the way I shoot, the way I've always trained and the way uh, I've used guns for jobs previously past and now, I need to know where that wall is because I may need to make a last minute decision to say no, come off, but I want that defined wall because it lets me know I am right here and the next millimeter of movement is sending this round down range. 
and I prep my trigger. Nine times out of 10 when I'm shooting, if I come out of the holster, I know things are gonna get bad, I am prepping that trigger. If I'm coming out of the holster for anything else, my finger is straight along the frame rail, which is where it should be if you have not made that conscious decision to fire. Cost, that is probably one of the most prohibitive things here besides maybe if you can't have a trigger in your gun for work or state law or something like that because these things can get very expensive. There are trigger kits out there that are well over 200 bucks and there are ones that are down there in 59 and some of those cheaper ones can actually be a little bit better than the more expensive ones. So cost is gonna come into play here too. And then obviously, look, some people flat out love the way certain things look. Some people go for more function. Some people go for fashion over function. It really, it depends on what you do. I try to find the most function and the most looks and kind of get somewhere in there. Now, obviously, the most function, it's going to be the factory trigger. It's the most proven. It's the most tested. But some people like a different feel. Some people like a different look. I like flat face triggers when it comes to pistols now. That's just kind of my thing. Where in other type things, I like curved interface triggers. So it really kind of depends down to the end user on that one. But I would never be one to say, give up function and safety for looks. That's just not what, uh, what I would do, especially when it comes down to firearms. So the first one out here, everybody, is gonna be the factory trigger. So we're talking about triggers, and we're talking about aftermarket and changing triggers. So we gotta kick the factory one out just right off the bat, because there's a reason why most people don't like them, get rid of them, change them, do whatever. So we'll get back into the more uh, kind of nicer engagement options out there on the market. And the second one I'm out is gonna be the Vickers trigger. Uh, this thing is not even close to the top three. It's not even close to the top 10. In fact, I would never recommend anybody get this one just because it was a colossal waste of time and ammunition and money for me. It fit terrible. The feel of it was really, really bad. Um, just overall had a not good experience with this. It was very cheap. It was the cheapest one of the group guys, but obviously you get what you pay for. And I know they have a newer version out that supposedly has kind of fixed, you know, the lack of that trigger shoe safety going all the way in and some of the tactile feel but it was actually too wide. So the body of this didn't fit in, in my Glock frame. So it was too thick from the factory. There were just too many problems. I know it was a test group of one, but this thing definitely out. So the first aftermarket one out is the Vickers Tango Down Trigger. The second one out of the top three is going to be the Agency Trigger. It's just been a problem, child. Uh, there are too many things going on with it. The way they have reformed the uh, the vertical extension of that trigger bar that engages on the striker safety, you know, the plunger in the, in the uh, slide. They've gotten so aggressive with that that it, it does work with maybe a reformed uh, striker safety or some serious work done to it, but it just has not functioned very well in most of the frames I have, whether they're factory or aftermarket or this one. But like I said, if I put a different slide on here, specifically that rock, uh, uh, the rock slide USA one, it functions flawlessly. It's an amazing trigger, but the problem is it's just too finicky. Um, and it's gotten too aggressive with, you know, taking things back so far that you have to mill out that vertical extension to make it fit over the, the striker safety so it doesn't become unsafe. And it just caused a lot of problems. I haven't had good experiences with it. Now, I only have one agency, but I know a bunch of people that have had serious issues with it. And pretty much everybody I know that's ever bought an agency trigger personally in my life they don't use them anymore, and some of them sent them back and got refunds, and some of them just threw them in the trash. Now, if I had one to show you, this would be the next one that would be out of the group, and that would be the Zev uh, adjustable kit thing like that. And the reason for that is I just didn't have a great experience with the Zev that I was playing with. It was a buddy of mine. I'm just not a huge fan of adjustable triggers. I will put that out there right now. Uh, there's just too many things going on, too many parts that could come loose or screws that could change place. Uh, there's a lot more maintenance with them. Uh, the cost was fairly high on the Zev stuff. Uh, Zev overall, yeah, I'm just not a huge fan of a lot of their products. Um, I've seen a lot of issues with Zev stuff over the year. Uh, I do like their magwells. Some of their magwells are pretty dang good. But as far as their triggers go and their slides and stuff like that, I've just seen more problems than I would want to deal with. So Zev is out. Now the next one that's going to be out is the Arsenal Democracy. And that thing, like I said, they did an amazing job with the engineering on that trigger. The machine work on it was beautiful. Uh, the way they reformed that trigger bar and took out every single little stamp and burr and everything on it. Absolutely great work by those guys. But it's expensive, okay? It was really expensive. There was a back order on them. I don't know if it's still on back order. Um, and that's because of how much engineering they did and all that stuff. But then it required an extension screw. So in the Glock trigger system, if you don't know how it works, I will put how the Glock trigger works video 
in the description down below. And it walks you through the safeties and how they work and how they function. And, and for order for Arsenal Democracy to do what they did with that trigger and the reason it's arced in kind of a triangular fashion is because they pulled the geometry so far back in that trigger that they had to extend the ledge of the drop safe ledge um, so that it wouldn't just be an unsafe gun and the striker could come off the, uh, the, drop, sale, the drop safe ledge. And there's a couple of reasons why the trigger is the way it is. The reason it's arced is because if it was straight, it would be pulled so far back, it would be touching the frame before the striker could go forward because they had to extend the drop safe ledge. I know that sounds like a lot, but there was just a lot going on with that trigger. And I think they really did engineer the crap out of that thing. But I think it's also more of maybe a competition style trigger. I don't think it's a duty carry trigger. In fact, I can guarantee you there's probably no agency in their world that's going to allow that because of how they've modified uh, the trigger housing group and the trigger, but it's just, it's just, just too much stuff going on with it. So that's why I take it out. Although a lot of people love it. And I do think it's actually a pretty cool looking trigger as well. So the next one out and it, you know, these are all not per se in any order at this point is that CMC trigger. Uh, it just eh, for the cost performance, look, tactile engagement feel just wasn't there. It didn't do it for me. It's not even in a gun. Uh, I think I used the trigger block for a Paul Brady build and just have this trigger sitting in my closet in parts over here and I'll probably never use it again. So the CNC was out, it just didn't for the cost, it didn't give you really much at all. There was a little bit of pre-travel reduction, not nearly what, uh, what I would think. And as one guy put it, James over at Tactical Pontoon said, he, uh, it was a trigger that broke his heart because there, he got detained at the border because there was so much pre-travel. Um, and it is, it just, it just wasn't the greatest. They didn't do much with the geometry, they didn't take much out, they didn't give much back. And it costs a lot. They're proud of their triggers for the Glocks. Um, you know, their AR triggers, yeah, pretty dang good. Glock trigger, I, I just think they did not get it right on this one. So the next one that's out of the top three is gonna be the Tactical Pontoon. Now, I know, it's it's awesome. There's a lot of good stuff in here. You know, it's pretty, pretty sweet looking. And uh, it's got that short reset, that very, very short uh, pull and engagement and stuff in there. And <laughs> it's light, guys, and it can get lighter than it is because this is the factory minus connector in this one. Um, but the reason this one is out is because this is more of a competition style trigger. There is an extension of the drop safe ledge on there. Anytime we're pulling something that far back on a Glock trigger and we're extending the drop safe ledge, to me, we're going competition only. You're not gonna get that approved for a duty carry weapon. Um, I would not go jamming this trigger down in an appendix holster. That's just my personal feeling. I do love the trigger. This thing on the range is an absolute blast to shoot, but it's very light, it's very, very short, and since there are those modifications to the trigger housing block back there, that's why it doesn't make the top three for me. All right, we're narrowing it down, guys. Now, the next one that doesn't make it, and this is one is, is by sheer cost for what you get, and that's gonna be the SSVI right there. Now, like I said, I really do like this. This is probably one of, if not the sexiest trigger shoe out there on the market. The machine work on it, absolutely amazing. The little logo up in there, and just how this feels, just buttery smooth on your finger. It is an absolutely beautiful trigger, and you do get what you pay for. It's very safe, pre-travel reduction, not as much as some others, um, but it's expensive. I wanna say it's like 150 bucks, so it's about 25 to 30-ish more than the others that were gonna make the top three, and it's over double what uh, one of the top three is. But it's really nice, it's just cost prohibitive is the reason this one didn't make the top three. All right, now if you've done the math or if you've paid attention, we're gonna get into that top three now. And this isn't any specific order. These are just kind of three that I think really should be some of the top picks out there. And that comes down to like everything I said up front. Safety first, they do have some looks. Are they cost effective? What is that tactile engagement feel on there? That wall style, and then how do they look? Cause that is gonna be very important to someone. And I'll say again, never sacrifice safety or durability or anything like that for looks. But let's go ahead and get into that first one that makes the top three. And that first one, the top three is going to be the Steel City Arsenal trigger right there. So this trigger is very good looking. It's reduced on the pre-travel, nice break, reset, nice hard wall on a break. So I have found that this trigger has a fairly consistent hard wall on it, depending on what frame it's in. So polymer 80s um, kind of have some inconsistencies here. Not that they're not fun to build, they're not fun to have. I've got a bunch of them, guys. But they definitely, if you don't drill things right and you're not all set up perfectly in there, you can have some different experiences with how triggers work. 
in all the polymer AEs I own except for one, and that's the first one I built where I drilled the holes maybe a little, little off center because I was doing it by hand. This trigger has a consistent hard wall, great break, reduced pre-travel, um, passes all the safety checks, all the safety tests, but it's close, okay? This one is the most aggressive uh, that I would say would make this top three in a safety category. It's definitely got some looks going on there. Some people love it. Some people like a little bit more of a look to it. Um, the version two on this one, I do think looks a little bit better. Uh, the coatings on them look a little cleaner. I like what they've done, kind of re-engineering the safety on the trigger shoe right there. I'll give you guys an up close look. You can see right there, they are using uh, some set screw style stuff in there um, rather than like the dowel pins or uh, coil pins and things like that. Uh, because sometimes those things can back out over time. So really cool design. They've re-engineered that and gone through it. Pretty dang cool from them. And the budget factor, I want to say it's like 79 bucks or something. So that's pretty dang cost affordable. And that's with the factory polished bar and the trigger shoe. And I think a lot of people that are getting into the trigger market can probably afford that. Now it does operate best with a rounded off safety plunger. And I think you're going to find that rounding off the striker safety, the plunger safety in the slide is going to overall make your trigger feel a lot less gritty and a lot more smooth. So this is one of the ones that definitely um, performs best with that. And then the next one, and I'm sure you guys knew this was going to be in the top three, is that Apex. And I love the Freedom Flatty stuff that they do. Reduced pre-travel, great wall there, solid break, reset, and a break again. So the Apex trigger is one of the ones that started the big trigger thing. They do a great job. They engineer the crap out of things. I've been to their factory. What I can tell you is they drop test and, and just beat guns up when they were making parts for them. So this thing is extremely safe and it's pretty dang budget friendly because you can buy several different variations. You can get the trigger to trigger bar, you can get the trigger shoe, or you can get the action enhancement kit. Now, depending on which version, which generation you have, that may be the trigger, the trigger bar, uh, the, the connector, and then the striker safety plunger. Um, so it depends on what model you're getting. This specific one is in a Gen 5. So in the Gen 5, it's the trigger, trigger bar, and the connector. Now, when it came to the Gen 5s, the first triggers that um, Apex did release for the Gen 5s, they couldn't get the Gen 5 bars in mass. So they did remachine some Gen 3 bars. And the reason you can tell the difference on those is because they will have laser engraved on them Apex. Now, what I found was is that the this one specifically is a Gen 3 uh, bar in here that they cut the back off where the spring would be to make it usable in the Gen 5 platform's trigger housing. What I found was the Gen 3 bars that Apex made work actually feel more consistently hard wall than the Gen 5 bars do. Um, I can't explain to you why, but for some odd reason, that's just, uh, that's just what I feel out of it. And if you look at my Apex Gen 5 video, which I'll link down below or throw a card up here for you, you guys can see for yourself the difference in kind of the wall of those two triggers, both in Gen 5 guns. Now, the last one in my top three here is going to be, you guessed it, the Overwatch Precision right there, guys. So there's a lot good here with this trigger. And we're going to talk about this. And I do think this, not specifically this one, but the Polydat. So this is the aluminum machine version of this trigger here. Now this trigger has great looks. It has great engineering behind it. It's an NP3 bar. If you don't know what NP3 coating is, you can do some research on that. Very cool stuff. Got some diversity properties. Very, very easy to keep clean and maintain. Now the trigger shoe on here, guys, give you guys another look at it up here. And you guys can see my reviews on these. It's a good looking trigger bar. It really, really is, or shoe, I mean. Looks good, feels good, it's very safe. They've taken about 20% of that pre-travel out, passes all the safety checks, passes all the safety tests, and it's just dang good looking. And I wanna say this version is 120-ish dollars, maybe 130. Now the Overwatch Polydat trigger is only 59 bucks. That is a pretty dang unbeatable uh, price, and I have several of them. I've got a couple in Polymer 80 builds, I've got uh, the, the Glock 21 in there, the big frame. I've got small frame Glock in the Paul Rady. He's got them in the Gen, uh, Gen 4, uh, Gen 319s, uh, the 17s. It's a really solid trigger. So you're getting the looks of the polymer shoe. You're getting the performance of this, but it's coming in at 59 bucks instead of 120. So it is the most budget trigger um, out there 
that I know of on the market besides the Vickers, which I wouldn't recommend to anybody. And it gives you all the performance of the higher end ones. Instead of getting an MP3 trigger bar, you just get a polished trigger bar. So not really much different, still pretty easy to clean, very good looking, but you're getting all the performance at literally half the cost. So that's my top three, everybody. I hope it helps you out. If you're in the market for a trigger, or if you're just looking for some entertainment value, if you are interested in anything that you have seen here today, I will leave links down below in the description. If you're on YouTube, the 2A stuff isn't allowed there. So you can go ahead and hit that first link or two in the description. It's gonna take you off to another place where this video is, or you can go to my website, which is tacticalconsiderations.com, and you can see all the parts. Now, those are the affiliate links. So if you guys use them, if you like anything you saw, and if you wanna support the channel or my work, you can get into those and use those links for your purchase. I also started the Subscribestar page in case you guys wanted to support me because I had a bunch of people asking about stuff like that recently, so you can check that out. The link will be down below for you as well. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you get notifications. I do have a bunch of stuff coming up on the channel here really soon. I'm gonna have a bunch more stuff for the M&P to include that new flatty trigger for it because they did come out with a second generation which is quite a bit different than the original design when it comes to the engagement of the trigger shoe. Those small frame apex triggers with their new design as well because they have changed their trigger shoes just a little bit from the first generation they put out the past several years. And there's also a company coming out with a new CZ trigger. I can't say anything yet, but I know it's coming. I will get to that video as soon as possible. And then I've got some FN509 stuff. If you can't see it hanging out there in the back room right there, I picked up an FN509 tactical one. You know I had to pick it up in that gray because I kind of dig gray. If they made an orange one, I would have probably bought an orange one, but a lot of stuff coming for the FN509 tactical. And a lot of aftermarket stuff is coming out for the FN509 Tactical that I don't think a lot of people know about. So stand by for that stuff in the near future. And we are definitely gonna talk about the Hollow Sun products and some of the AR builds I have coming up. Hope you guys liked everything here today. Get out there, have some fun on the range, stay safe, stay ready, and I will see you guys on the next one.